Hey, this is Ricky Warwick. And Jimmy DeGrasso. And we are from Black Star Riders, and you're watching Ramzine, Co.UK. I yeah. just wondered, do you have a favorite download memory as well? Oh yeah, the one that, did, that didn't rain. The one that didn't the, yeah, the rain. The one time it didn't rain. rain. When was that? Because every time we play it rains. <laughs> it's like, you know if you're playing download, you pretty much bring your, your, your swim gear because it's going uh, to yeah. be wet and muddy the whole day. Well, I've actually seen people in swimming costumes. They've just given up. Yeah, but... there's no point at, at, at anymore. It's just like, you're going to get dirty, you're going to get wet. You're gonna get probably liquored up, so is it true. is downloaded. I see you haven't got your wellies on today, though. No, we've actually we came terribly unprepared. Yeah. <laughs> we were hoping, we just thought maybe this year will be the year that the sun shines for us, yeah. but we were wrong. Yeah. And we're going to probably regret it later, so uh, yeah. but you know, yeah. we're hard, we'll deal with it. Fingers crossed, it clears and up. And I'm things. Irish, I'm used to this anyway, you know. Oh, that's all right, though. Yeah. Um, so you were on tour with Europe not so long ago. We were. How was that? That was a lot of fun. Yeah. They're, they're, they're good guys and, and nice people and friends of ours. Great live band. Uh, two bands got on great. It was it was a real easy tour. Yeah. And uh, a very successful one and, and uh, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, it's quite a good kind of tour for you to be on because there are so many kind of similar fans uh, with the well, yeah. fans. You think so? I don't. I mean, I think it was quite a... It was, Europe definitely brought their fans and we definitely brought ours. Yeah. And I think what was good about it was, you know, the fans would you know, we'd, we'd steal some of your fans, these yeah. some Black Star Riders, and I think that was the whole idea of it. You know, there was slightly two different sets of fan groups there. Yeah. And, yeah. They, and they mixed very well, and I think, you know, both fans won over new fans. Yeah. Um, and I was looking at... Um, Sales figures from last year, and what? apparently, um, well, in terms of music sales, um, apparently old music um, sold more than new music last year. Um, and I just wondered, how do you think that reflects the music industry today? Well, new music's shit. That's what it is. <laughs> there, there, there's your answer. That's well, why, you know. Most of it is. No, Sorry, no, that's, that's a bit of a generalization. I was, I was saying? trying to say the same thing, but you said it yeah. before I could say it. So, you know. No, I think he's right. I mean, a lot of the new music, new music it's stuck, you know, especially with kids, I think, I, I think they're really searching for, you know, it's, it's as, as well as the quick accessibility, they're really looking for things. I think they're going back a little bit and they're finding some of the more classic stuff yeah. is pretty cool, you know, so I think that's what's happening. Yeah, I, I mean, I met some kids here earlier, they've never seen KISS before. They, you know, they only check KISS out because they're playing today. Sure. Um, and I'm sure there's plenty of the same people for Black Star Riders, you know, people see you on the lineups, new fans are discovering you every well, day. Well, I just, I feel a lot of, a lot of bands today, they, they, they're struggling for something to say, which I don't understand because it's a tough, nasty old world out there. Yeah. And, you know, there should be plenty to write about and sing about. And, you know, it seems to be formalized as well. Everything seems to be a formula, a certain type of sound and all that. Kids need to strip it back, and hopefully, if they go back and listen to some of the older bands, they'll see where it all started and where it all came from, and yeah. that's where they'll get their inspiration from. Yeah, you guys are kind of be veteran musicians now. I would we say. We mean with a bunch of old bastards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I like veteran I better. better. I I'd rather say, you go with veteran. Yeah, I didn't want to say. Yeah. You know, but, um, you know, I, it must be quite easy for you to come, uh, like, go on tour and play. Like, you know what you're doing. Do you find it easier on the oh, road? You know, you, uh, yes and no. I mean. Yeah, we've been doing this a long time, so we know what to expect. We know how to pack to go through security at an airport. Pretty, yeah. pretty good at this point, you yeah, know. Yeah, no kidding. You know all that kind of stuff, you know. And but touring still has its challenges, you know. As you get older, traveling it takes it out of you more, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, you know you got to kind of look after yourself a bit more, and certain things like that you adjust for with your age. But you know it still it still has its surprises. Things can still go wrong on the road. Something you know, something can get ill, you know, you know all that kind of stuff. So it, it always surprises you, but yeah, you know, we, I'd like to think we have an idea of what we're doing at this point. Yeah. In time, yes. And um, would you say there's many kind of differences being a touring band now as opposed to when you were younger? <laughs> I think it's you know, budgets are, are not what they used to be. You know, you used to get you before when Jimmy and I were touring and, and, and bands that we were in. It was a huge record company support and infrastructure there to support, you know, your the band. If you were a new band and you were out supporting a tour and you weren't getting the guarantees each night, the record company would help you do that. Record companies just don't have that kind of clout anymore. Right. And I think that's that's a big thing. You know, you've got to be very frugal, you've got to you've got to look at how much you're you're spending and how much you're making and and, and, and try and, and try and make it a business unfortunately, because that's really what it is at the end of the day. And I think it was much more you know, you know, 10, 15 years ago. 
money wasn't so much an issue because the budgets were huge. Yeah. And people were buying CDs and buying albums yeah. and generating more of an industry. That's just not happening at the minute. So right. kids, buy the records. Uh, I went to a rock industry conference this week, uh, Rockcom's first rock industry conference in London. And um, our manager of... spoke at it. Oh, really? Yes, our, oh. our manager was talking at it this week. Oh, very good. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that was mentioned is um, they reckon that in the next couple of years people aren't going to be buying CDs or paying for music. Do you think it's all that's... streaming? Yeah. I mean, well, I, you know, I think as you see this week, what happened with Apple launching their their, their new streaming site. Unfortunately, that seems to be the way it's going. But then again, vinyl sales are bigger than they've ever been. Yeah. And uh, I think people in our age group still, a lot of them still want something physical, physical. and yeah. something that's got a soul. I mean, I, I know it's an element object, it's not a soul, but that that soulless owning something and opening it up and reading it and physically putting on and playing yeah. to it, yeah. listening yeah. to it. And I'm, we're seeing that a lot as well with uh, ourselves, Ramsline, we're a zine, it's online, but we also sell print copies and people are buying them. Yeah. Um, and I do think there is a need for people want physical items rather than just Well, it should be an online. experience. Music's an experience. You should experience it, you know, and that's getting the album, looking at the artwork, reading the sleeve notes, reading the lyrics, you know, putting it on, the whole thing, sitting down, listening to it. I mean, sorry, I mean, it's great and it's easy. I, I'm, we both do it, you know, we both download stuff, but, yeah. you know, I still, when I'm home, will listen to vinyl. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's funny, I know, it's, I, st I just started, I haven't had vinyl in about 20 years, now I started listening to records again. again. Yeah. You know, it's like, like, I, I, I found an enormous box of, like, old records, and I'm like, wow, they sound pretty good, you know, yeah. and we all, everyone went digital, and everyone's kind of like going back, well, you know what, if you listen to this older stuff, you're hearing things you didn't hear before. Right, yeah, you yeah, know, it's yeah. really cool, because a lot of it did get squashed and all the compression and everything, so yeah. it's really cool to go back and do that. I think that's what kids are doing as well, I agree. you know, so. Definitely. Well, um, do you Black Star Riders currently off their vinyl? Yes, uh, we do. Oh, yeah, absolutely, well. I mean, always. I mean, the vinyl, uh, Killer Instinct I went number three in the UK vinyl charts, so yeah. which was great. So yeah, no, that's something we're very conscious about. And we do the gatefold sleeve, and yeah. we did coloured vinyl. You know, we go old school now. We did the we did gold and silver vinyl, which is pretty yeah. pretty and rad. I think it's, having a vinyl, it kind of looks good as well, and yeah. people can do like picture discs and things like that. But one thing I can't see coming back is a cassette tape, just because it's too. Hey, you never know. No, I know. Eight track. You wouldn't even know what that is. Oh my God. No. <laughs> no. You know, no. She's like, what? Uh, well, you know, I think for us, seeing it in, in vinyl and holding it and getting it, it feels like all your work's paid off and you've created something. And here's the thing, here's what we were working towards. Yeah. When you see it on a computer screen, it just doesn't feel the same. You know. Yeah. Listen, I'm not trying to sound like I'm an old fogey here. I get it. I'm like, I, I get Apple and all these things. They're great and, and yeah. they have their place. But I'd be great if there was room for everything. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's right. Um, so, uh, what has Black Star Riders got planned for the rest of the year? We just we, we write and we will write some more stuff. We'll continue to tour, and uh, you know, as any band does, you keep going, you keep pushing forward, you yeah. keep trying to play bigger, better shows, make bigger, better records. And... Yeah, cool. Well, uh, we spoke to Damon in February, uh, right. and he said at the time that you were compiling material for album number three. Um, I just wondered, is there any progress on that at the moment? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're always working on ideas and stuff like that, but I mean, I think it'll be uh, next year before we actually start recording it. Yeah, yeah okay. So, recording next year, perhaps out beyond? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we're, we're slated to maybe start recording in the summer, so whether it comes out before the end of 2016, I'd like to think so, but it might be 2017 early, you know? Yeah. I mean, we still want to try and do some stuff with this record because we're very proud of it. And, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we've only really just started pushing it, so. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh, well, thank you very much for talking to us. Sure. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Thanks.